Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching Disruptive Investing. And we're gonna be talking about Teslas as a source of income. So Jesse and I have been reporting on Tesla's full self-driving and autonomous driving for years. Back in 2016, we got a Model X and drove coast to coast here in the US almost entirely on autopilot. And since then, we've been trying all the different variations that Tesla has produced in many of their different models from Model 3 to Model Y to Cybertruck. Hardware 2, Hardware 3, now Hardware 4, Autopilot version 1, all the way up to the latest full self-driving supervised version 13.2. And I get it. If you haven't experienced this in real life, then it doesn't really make sense. And even myself, pretty much every other time I drive on full self-driving, I have this moment where I'm going, oh my God, this car is driving me to my destination. And it doesn't seem real, even though I have more experience with this than practically anyone else. So I totally get it that most of the world has no idea what's about to happen. But you, my dear viewers, are here because you are open to companies that are disrupting. And I get that many of you might actually start thinking, is this true? Is it true that Tesla could not only achieve this autonomous robotaxi network, but will people actually buy Teslas and put them on the network and make money from it? And to answer that question, you need to basically answer two questions. One, will Tesla be able to pull it off with their hardware and software? And number two, will the average person earn enough money renting out their autonomous Tesla to make it attractive enough to actually do the unthinkable? Let other people into your car. So let's answer those two questions right here, right now. Buckle up. So first, will Tesla be able to pull it off with their hardware and software? Now, we've been saying yes to that question for years, but to be honest, until version 13.2, I probably couldn't have convinced you. But if you got into one of our cars right now and sat behind the wheel and I put it into 13.2 and gave it a destination, you would have your brain exploded. Because we've done it to people and it's passed all of the negative pushback tests, if you wanna call it that. Even people who were sure that it couldn't do what we have said have walked away after the test ride and had their minds blown. It's very reminiscent of the people we used to put in the car back in 2016 who thought that this was gonna feel like a golf cart and yet they walked away thinking, oh my God, this is not what I thought an electric car was. The problem is, in my opinion, during these many years that Tesla has been improving this technology, instead of the legacy media covering it and letting people know uh, what was happening, they covered it up and they misreported on it or they didn't report on it at all. So when people experience it now, one of the first questions they ask is, why haven't I heard of this? And this is a tough one for a lot of people because when you haven't heard about it through news sources, you tend to think, that the thing must not be real. But that's why we do this show. We've been trying to get people to understand what's really happening for the past decade. So in short, to answer that first question, the answer is yes, this is real. It is actually happening as we speak. And although 13.2 is not perfect yet, the rate of improvement is exponentially getting better. And Tesla has the real world driving data to improve their models. And I do believe that this year, Tesla should drive safer than a human for the first time in human history. And even if we're wrong about the timing, even if it takes Tesla a little bit longer, I'm positive that next year they'd be able to get it there if they couldn't somehow pull it off this year. And don't take my word for it. It's not impossible to get yourself into a version 13.2 Tesla and test it for yourself. Uh, if you live in the United States or you're visiting, you can go for a test ride in a Tesla, either at a showroom or at many locations, there's demo drives. You can experience it for yourself and come to your own conclusions, which as a disruptive investor, you should always try and do. Go back to first principles, judge reality for yourself. Worst case, if you can't do that, Zach and I have put out videos of full self-driving and there's plenty of other content creators like Holmar's Catalog and Chuck Cook and Dirty Tesla who are all doing this as well. Okay, so it is real and it is going to happen soon. So next you wanna know whether or not it's going to make enough money for the average Tesla owner to be willing to put their car onto the Tesla network. Cause let's face it, taking your brand new shiny Tesla and letting other people go for rides in it does not seem like something most people wanna do. So they're going to have to earn enough money that this becomes an attractive proposition, which leads to the question, how much money could you make by putting your Tesla on the network when you're not using it yourself? So we're not gonna hit you with endless spreadsheets here. For this thought experiment, we're gonna use data that we already have from years of Uber and Lyft ride data and apply some common sense takeoffs and some extrapolations. Let's just use what I think will be a pretty common example. Someone, let's name him Carl. Carl has just bought a new Tesla Model Y for about $50,000 after incentives. Carl has a nine to five job. And so there are two chunks of the day where Carl isn't needing his car. While Carl's at work for eight hours and after he gets home from work 
from, let's say, 6 p.m. to 7 a.m. the next morning. Okay, so that's, wow, that's 19 hours a day. Right. I mean, the average car sits unused for 95% of the time. That's just a fact. So let's assume that Carl Carl. really wants to maximize how much he can make from the Tesla RoboTaxi network. He wants to really give it a shot to see if maybe this will pay for his car payments. We're not gonna get into the potential problem in this video, the charging, the cleaning. We're gonna keep it simple and just focus on the number of rides Carl can expect his Model Y will give per day and how much he can expect to make per ride. Okay, how about the weekends? Does Carl get to use his car on the weekends? Good question. Let's assume Carl is going to use his car for going shopping and visiting his friends for a few hours on the weekend. So let's say he's going to use it Saturday evenings from 7 p.m. to midnight and 10 to 3 p.m. on Sundays. The rest of the time, he'll rent it out on the network. What we know from Lyft and Uber data is that the average Uber and Lyft ride is five miles, and the driver can expect to give 1.5 to two rides per hour. The average ride costs the user $19, and Uber or Lyft takes an average of 22% per ride. So if Carl rents out his car for 19 hours per day, that's 133 hours per week. I'm going to estimate on the lower side of 1.5 rides per hour because a lot of Carl's Tesla hours are off-peak hours. So that would be 200 rides per week. If Carl were an Uber or Lyft driver, he would earn $3,790 per week. Uber or Lyft would take $834 of that. So Carl would keep $2,956 per week. Wait, you're saying Carl is making $12,000 per month? Well, this is assuming that Carl is driving 19 hours per day for Uber or Lyft, and nobody can do that for more than a day or two without going crazy. But yes, assuming Carl was a robot, yes, he would earn $3,000 a week or about $12,000 per month. But Carl does have expenses. In this case, he has to pay for the electricity to power his Model Y. So with 200 rides per week at five miles per ride, that's a thousand miles. So that means about 250 kilowatt hours of electricity. Now at the US average price of 17 cents per kilowatt hour, that would be $42.50 per week in electricity but he's making $2,956. Well, after electricity expenses, it's only $2,913.50. And, and he's going to go through a lot of tires faster than he normally would. So let's say at 1,000 miles per week, plus his own driving, he's going to need a set of new tires about every year at a cost of about $1,400. So at $2,913.50 per week times 52 weeks. Well, you know what? Let's say 50 weeks, because every year Carl's going to go on a road trip vacation and use his car. Okay. Uh, 50 weeks a year, that's $145,675. Don't forget the tires. Okay, $144,275. That's incredible. Carl could buy about three Model Ys per per year. Now we are making a lot of assumptions for the good and the bad. We're assuming that Tesla will charge its users the same as Uber and Lyft in this example I just gave. But my guess is that to be competitive, Tesla will charge a lot less. So let's say Tesla charges 30% less than the competition and that they still take an average of 22% from Carl for each ride, just like Uber and Lyft do. That would mean that Carl would take home less. So this would mean that after Tesla fees and electricity, Carl would earn $2,026.70 per week or only $101,335 per year. Only? A hundred grand a year for doing nothing? Well, for this example, we did maximize the amount of time Carl puts his Tesla on the Tesla network. Carl really only gets to use his car to drive him to work and home from work and eight hours on the weekends. This example was to open many people's minds as to why Elon thinks his idea will work. He's betting on the fact that many people will do this back of the napkin math or hear about what friends or work colleagues are making. Right, that they will experiment with putting their Teslas onto the network. It could be very lucrative. Again, we didn't get into all the nitty gritty details about cleaning and charging and potential mishaps like accidents and damage to the car, etc. We'll discuss those important topics in a future video. We simply wanted to demonstrate what a lot of people are going to figure out when the network starts, possibly as soon as later this year. And honestly, this is why Elon thinks full self-driving is worth $100,000. And why he thinks it's a steal today at $8,000. Now, disclaimer, we're not financial advisors. Do not take our advice on whether to buy stock in something or to buy a car. But if you agree with our assumptions and our math, you may want to think about investing in this disruptive technology yourself, either by investing in Tesla stock or by investing in Tesla vehicles with full self-driving.
happening. We hope it gave you something to think about. Join us on our weekly Tesla Time News show over on the Now You Know channel and consider joining us on Patreon because we have an investor club over there where we talk about this kind of stuff all the time. We'll see you guys next week on Disruptive Investing.